Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech Show. Uh, coming up on the show this week, we have a little look at Giant's new suspension fork. Some more linkage fork price drops. A production mullet bike coming at you. And some top mods from yourselves. All right, so straight into news. Um, first up, it's not a new product, it's the Motion E18. That's one of those linkage forks. Um, they've just announced a price drop. Um, basically, what they're suggesting, they're saying now, is instead of going through the classic distributor model, they're gonna be going direct, so they can afford to offer you uh, a discount. So they've gone down around 400 euros for a set. I mean, gone down 400 euros, still very expensive fork. So they're gonna be retailing at 1140 in euros or 1250 in US dollars. Um, what do you think about this? I think it's kind of because we've also seen a truss go down recently as well. Again, another very high end fork. I mean, it kind of smacks of, I mean, it must be very difficult because they're almost reinventing the wheel. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And to say to somebody, don't worry about your lyrics, don't worry about your factory 36s because we've got something that is better, yeah. it's more expensive, and it's not what you expect. Mm. It must be, it's, it's a very hard sale. Yeah, no, absolutely. I do feel for them because they both are, in fact, there's quite a few other companies doing a similar thing with linkage forks, uh, all offering different traits, but it, it, it's so hard to go against the grain with yes. the telescopic thing. And I've heard various people for years, you know, like Chris Porter's always said, you know, the telescopic nature of a fork is not, not the ideal one for a mountain bike. And um, we'll have a chat to him separately about that stuff, actually, because he has said in recent times that he thinks current forks are outdated. But even then, when you've got the most technical forks in the world, when they cost like uh, up, up to $2,000. Yeah, I think- Who's gonna buy them? Because when you get into that money, you want something that is has that drool, drool worthiness. Yeah. You know, because value at that point is out the window. Oh, of course, yeah. So you do want something- It's gotta be the best thing possible on the market or look like the best thing possible on yeah. the market. And I think there are so many, you know, the forks mentioned earlier on, the 36 and the Lyric. Yeah. It's not as if they do, you know, it's not as if you ride them thinking, oh, this has got a big blind spot in terms of performance. They haven't yeah. considered this. They do both seem to be really well- Well-rounded well forks. Well-rounded yeah. forks. Yeah, yeah, no, 100%, I agree with you. Although, at the same time, forgetting the prices, I'm not, I'm not not for linkage forks. Like, I'm not there yet. Like, they're really, really quite different and visually, I'm definitely not there and I'm sure, um, in fact, I know that some of you aren't because I put an Instagram post up and I saw the comments on it. But um, but I would actually like to know what you all genuinely think of linkage forks. Forget what they look like. Just talk about what you feel that they might be like. Uh, let us know in the comments underneath. Next up, we have a new bike from Foes. Mm. So Foes are kind of well, OGs of frames and forks, I suppose. <sighs> Some of the bikes they used to make back in the day, oh my God, and just they, amazing. And they do have some real heritage. Mm. They seem to be one of a growing number of small boutique frame manufacturers mm. that seem to be kind of jumping on board with this whole mullet thing. Yeah. Although I think they have a better stake to it than most, having been mixing wheel sizes for the last five years, so half yeah. a decade in it. So um, certainly a cool looking bike. I saw, I saw you, you drag this one up, Doddy, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, so I mean, there's two versions of it. There's a trail spec version, slightly steeper geometry and a little less travel, and then the enduro race version. Uh, this is a trail one on screen, so you're looking at uh, 140 on the back there, uh, up to 152 in fact, with adjustable travel, running around a 150 fork. Uh, the enduro does 160, and then it's 160 to 178 mil rear wheel travel, angles, head angle 67 and a half versus 66 and a half. Um, 67 and a half, it's not exactly radical. Um, no, it's say. not. But, but that yeah. said, um, you know, I'm, I'm running out of Canyon and that's got like a 67 degree head angle and, and actually it's fine. Yeah, I mean, I, I think per, I'm probably guilty of it myself. You know, a head angle is very important, undoubtedly, yeah. but it is one piece of a larger it's piece. overall feel of the bike. 100%, yeah, people get carried away with just looking at yeah, the numbers. And, and just the way the where the bike sits in its stroke yeah. in the rear can make a huge difference in mm. that. And um, something like, you know, how the bike, what the bike does under braking, does it rise or does it squat? Yeah. So suddenly, when you take that into account, head angle all kind goes of, out the window. all goes out the window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm not gonna lie, I saw that number and I thought, Come on, guys, you can make, especially on a mullet bike, you can yeah. make that a bit slacker. Thinking if I had a 29 out back, it would probably, you know, <laughs> it would certainly yeah. get a bit steeper still. But I haven't ridden it. I don't know. They probably, it sounds like they do a lot of testing. And um, 
maybe for their area it's perfect. Yeah, yeah, I mean, foes have always done things their own way. Uh, even the construction of this, so it's made of 6061 aluminium, uh, the down tube's hydroformed, and the top tube is, uh, so, oh, I guess you call it a semi-monocoque, where you get two pieces, weld them together down the middle. Uh, it's an incredibly stiff way of making that part of the bike. Uh, but I do like something that they actually say about the mullet stuff. Um, with this concept in mind, the mixer gives you a ride and feel like no other bike you've ridden. The design puts the front wheel axle higher than the rear axle, which makes the bike easier to lift over obstacles and more responsive. That, you know, actually that's marketing speak, but actually does sound it does actually exactly as it would be, yeah. Um, with the bigger wheel up front, riders lean forwards more to weight the front wheel for better traction. And of course, leaning more weight onto a bigger front wheel uh, is gonna feel slightly more stable with the little wheel out back. So I actually think it sounds like a good fun concept. I know that Neil has experimented doing these things, but we still not actually done it. I think we, we actually need to pull a finger out and do it because um, I think there's a lot of good bonuses to it. Um, at the weekend, I posted a picture of the 27 and a half nuke proof reactor. I've just been like, borrowed it from Rob for a bit of a ride. And someone said, uh, have you thought about putting a shorter fork and putting a 29 on it? And uh, I think, you might have pointed out, I think maybe Nigel Page maybe tried it. Yes, he did, yeah. He had a picture of a mullet set up. So yeah, I do think we do need to I think we need to try. play around a bit. I mean, you know, in regards to what you said about the way they, the mullet was sort of described by foes. Mm. I think, yes, it might be. Is it the designs are getting better? Or is it that the language used to describe the designs is getting better? Not, not to no, the spanner in the works. I mean, people have done it for years. People like, have done it for years. Uh, Sintase, for example, they uh, not Sintase, Lightfield even. Mm. Lightfield had a, a, a mixed wheel size bike yeah. years ago. Many you know, and people ago. kind of not laughed at it, just raised an eyebrow and moved on. Yeah. You know, so it's been there and people are chipping away. But I think I think it's quite cool. And I like Definitely. the fact that foes have done it. I'm for it. Now this isn't the best in tech news, I admit, but it's Troy Lee Designs collaborating with Specialized again. They do this every few years. Um, and well, just have a look at the result of this on screen. Strictly limited editions uh, available in 29 and 27 and a half inch models. Um, that's about all you need to know. Uh, three grand for a frame set available in the S2 and the S3 sizes. Three grand? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, but I mean, it's got the Troy Lee paint job. I mean, the Troy Lee paint jobs, sometimes they look fantastic. This one's this quite one, subdued. This I one think. does look good. This yeah. one's the better ones. Sometimes they're a bit kind of monster at the trailhead. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this one actually looks pretty good. Special as one of those brands. Can't not like them, can you? They kind of do stuff. They do stuff, do stuff so right. Well. Yeah. And um, another brand that does stuff extremely well, but uh, perhaps not in the limelight enough, is Giant. Yeah. Um, tell us about the new forks. So they're kind of stepping into the fork game with a hundred, 120 mil travel, 34 mil uh, sanctioned. So I was quite surprised to see this. Damper. This is really interesting, and it's interesting not for what they've told us, but almost what they haven't told us. So for those that don't know. A couple of years ago, Giant partnered up with a company called DVO. Yep. Now, they did this to basically, well, I suppose, essentially be able to bring fork manufacturing essentially in-house by outsourcing it to DVO. All the bikes were gonna come with DVO-equipped forks, yep. so were their race teams. But they parted away after a merely a season. The rumor on the, you know, the street was that DVO didn't have any intentions of making a cross-country fork. Ah, right, and yeah. Giant wanted so the all their factory team to be all consistent all the way through. Yeah. Now, I, you know, I can't comment on. The, the, I don't know. Basically, it's only speculation. Mm. But I do wonder if DVO struggled with the demands of Giant. For instance, Olin's when they partnered up with Specialized mm. first year. I think it's fair to say they had a, a recall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They couldn't shut it out in time, could they? Yeah. Cane Creek also with Specialized had on those. Remember those inline double yeah, barrels? That's right. Had yeah. a lot of quality control. Mm -hmm. I think it's the problem but from going from a boutique manufacturer, making some very good kit. Getting involved with OEM. To satisfying a yeah. huge order. You just think about all the trail bikes alone and then all the glory bikes, so the downhill bikes yeah. alone. I mean, it's a huge Well, thing. and even you think that the Giant actually is the biggest bike manufacturer. Like they are, they are literally giant. They're huge, they make really? bikes. <laughs> and the, the, the range of their bikes, you know, all puns aside, they make every level and every style of bike in every price category. Like it's, it's quite phenomenal what they can make. Um, and having that 34 fork, I think this thing looks really good. Yeah. Um, everything in the video looks good. Um, there's AJ, a guy I know from Giant, um, and he's a really good rider and he's been part of the development team. So I've got high hopes for this. Yeah, fingers crossed. And a bit of a safety development actually, it's more of an announcement. Um, POC, we obviously, we use POC helmets here at GMBN, you'll have no doubt seen us using them. Um, more recently, they've had the spin protection on the inside, which is shearing pad inside. 
and it's um, to help prevent against uh, anti-rotational injuries, or rotational injuries. <laughs> um, <laughs> previously, they'd used the MIPS system, they'd worked with MIPS, and they've just announced that they're going to be working and developing with MIPS once more. Um, this, is, this is quite cool, I think, but it's also a bit out of the blue. Yeah, because they've got a bit of history. Both Swedish companies, they both have a kind of um, a footing in some government-funded Swedish um, kind of studies That's into. That's right, they've got proper initiative for safety, yeah. haven't they? Yeah. So they kind of, they are tied in some ways. However, I remember, I think it was a year or two ago, there was a bit of legal battles between uh, SPIN, POX system, and MIPS and whether they infringed upon each other. But I actually think it's going to be good seeing those kind of collective resources pooling together to hopefully give us safer helmets and yeah. who could decry that? I mean, uh, their stuff is really good as it is, but um, it does make me wonder if they might go into like the spherical market. So we've seen it, we've seen Giro do it in the road helmets and we've seen Bell now doing it. Uh, that new MIPS system, we've essentially got like um, a ball joint yep. on the head and it looks unbelievable, but um, I don't know, it's very, they, they did say they're very limited in how the helmet can be designed to incorporate that. So um, interesting things coming perhaps. Yeah, Who we'll knows? have to wait and see. So we also saw the release of a couple of new bikes. First up was the Commensal Furious, which is kind of their, you know, their park bike, their free ride bike. Yeah. It's not their downhill race bike. But although the silhouette is very similar to its previous iterations, it's a 35 mil longer in some sizes, in, this, well, in the same size. But interestingly, they've taken five mil off the chainstays to really give it that sort of turn on a dime, you know. Love that wheel. Base, love that yeah, wheel yeah. sort of vibe. Interestingly enough though, is that a large in the Furious is a whopping four what is it? It's a 490 reach. Yeah, wow, that's more, like trail bike territory. Yeah. yeah, and a large in the Supreme, which is their downhill bike, yeah. their downhill race bike. So, you know, it is what you think would be super long, is a 455 reach. Yeah. Which is a strange way. I don't know if maybe the comments are. Uh, and then I guess uh, the, the overall wheelbase on downhill bikes becomes a bit longer anyway because the increased yeah. travel and how rakes out they can. True, get. true. Uh, but yeah, no, I've, I've often thought that about, you know, normal bikes, trail bikes versus downhill bikes. I guess you need to, uh, well, clearly works. For yeah, me. Clearly, I mean, yeah, yeah less. In a <laughs> binge result. Yeah. That, that's probably one of the winningest bikes of the last year or two. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, don't yeah. listen to me, but even so, it's interesting. Um, another amazing bike that launched recently, in fact, let's just start with the launch video of <laughs> Bryn Atkinson on yeah. that new Norco Optic. Oh my God. Oh like, my God. It, it, that guy on a bike has probably got the best textbook style. In fact, if you had him doing all the videos on the ground and you had Brandon Seminet doing all the videos off the ground, close your entries, bases. Yeah. that'd be the, base, like, the best ever. It was just, who wouldn't want to ride like that? That's amazing. It right? was amazing. But the Optic itself is also a really cool bike and for a few reasons. First up, they have throughout the whole range, be it carbon, alloy, you know, all the way through, they spec that downhill super deluxe. I you know, love that they've shots. done that, yeah. So, That's you know, really cool. Really thinking about, you know, quality. And, well, this, well, this is only like a short travel bike as well. It's 125? Uh, 125. On the rear with a 140 fork. So to have that shot, they're clearly thinking about ride quality and nothing else. Yeah, totally. But they've also got their thing called the gravity tune, which yep. is keeping the rider's weight centered between the two wheels at all times, or at least trying to. They've done this for a few years. Yeah. Right? They're one of the few brands that do it. But one of the interesting things is they're saying, don't change the stem length. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because all run the same. Yeah, you need to change your handlebar width to tune your reach. Yep. Basically, the wider your handlebar is, imagine what it does to your shoulders and where it places your weight. But I thought it was just really, really cool. So yeah, actually, this is how the bike wants to be run. We've got the offset of the fork in particular. They change the chain stays as well, don't they? With yeah. each bike size, they've five grown got five mil. Yeah, so the chain stays go from 425 to 440. Uh, so 440 is quite a healthy length, which I, which I like on the rear there. Um, <laughs> it's four sizes, small, medium, large, extra large. Um, plenty of range in those. Um, yeah, reach varying between 420 up to 510. Yeah, so like decent sized bikes by all accounts. Uh, but love the fact they put that shock on it. Yeah. And that video really shows what that short travel bike can do. But is that an, a cross country bike or a trail? That's a trail bike. That's a trail bike. Yeah. That's a trail bike, but make no mistake, you know, there's not many people on earth that can ride a trail bike like that. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just unreal. I heard a great term the other day for bikes. We were, you know, we we're talking about it. Triple XC. Oh, triple XC. That's like one step up from down country, isn't it? Yeah, just like. like now, what sort of bike is it? Is that a triple XC bike? Do you think? I think it's more aggressive than a triple XC. That's, that's a trail bike. I think a triple XC bike is like that Trek top fuel. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Triple yeah. XC. I mean, it's got connotations of Vin Diesel, Australian lager. Vin What's Diesel. not to love? Wow. Yeah. Big time. 
<laughs> the Australian lager. We should probably not talk about that. I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> think anything actually drinks that. It's just for like cleaning the windows with us. <laughs> All right, now it's time for Bike Cave. It's where you lock your bikes up at night. It's where you work on them. It's where you colour in scratches you might have. Um, any sort of Bike Cave pictures you have, uh, take them and send them us to, into us, even. Uh, the link is at the bottom of the screen, right there. And we're gonna jump straight in with uh, Danny from Thousand Oaks, um, California. Thousand Oaks. Um, nothing said about it, recently finished Bike Cave. Um, it's Ooh. looking very clean and tidy. Uh, nice Troy helmet there. Uh, you should camel back, like, it's full up. What are you doing with that? Just mate, party it's, mode. It looks loaded. Got an M6 tucked away in there as well, uh, protecting your bikes, which is nice. Nice to have you use your car as a barrier against the bikes being nicked. <laughs> Always good. God, you've got quite a few bikes hanging up in there. Oh, you got a Jeep. I bet I show it to uh, to Blake. You'll get jealous. And what is that e-bike? I should know what that is. I should be an e-bike expert by now. Now I've got one, but I'm not. Is it a pivot? Pivot shuttle, perhaps. It's like a pivot shuttle. It looks good, it's yeah, got to be. Right. Just by the pivot above it, I reckon it probably is a shuttle. <laughs> but, um, man, you got, dude, you've got loads of bikes. Many bikes. Do you ride all those bikes? Does it matter, even? All right, next Ooh, up is baby. from Lucas in Ontario, Canada. All right, so well, can guess where you're from by that yeah, massive flag. Maybe maple syrup fan, yeah. I'm not sure. Um, I do like the OCD going on on that um, cutting mat on your workbench there. Nice homemade workbench by the looks of it as well, the wheel holder oh, nice. down the back cool, there. Actually. That's quite a nice little hack. Looking good. You've got your DeWalt drill up on the wall and the battery being charged. Oh, some serious length that skis there. Good. Yeah, nice. Uh, a pair of crutches. Uh, <laughs> hand, hand in hand with the skiing, I'd yeah, imagine. Be it. <laughs> Tried that last winter, didn't work. <laughs> uh, back to bikes. Nice old Cannondale down the back there and looks like a bit of motocross bike tucked to the side as well. Uh, some five tens. Oh, it looks like he's got beer fridge under the yeah, counter. Fridge. Makes sense. Man after my own heart. Uh, here we go. Oh, look at that. Oh. Oh, I can spy you on the iPad there. <laughs> yeah. Looking cool. A nice iPad holder as well. I don't know if that's maybe like driven yeah, down from the got, car. Um, I had a RAM mount for my iPad lying around, so I mounted it to the bench. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. So good. That's wicked. Just like technical drawings as well. Yeah. You can just swipe through them. Uh, over to Alistair now in Lancaster. Now, this is good. Good old shed. I love a messy shed for the stuff. <laughs> Got some maguras in there, the carpet tiles, there we Ooh, go. Many Got bikes. a ragley down the back and all the kids stuff. Uh, some sort of karcher for cleaning everything with. Like that little door's kids bike, that was quite cool. And there we go, there's the cruise. Nice colour coordination going on with yeah, your saddle and grips there. Yeah, big time. Pedal and stem as well. Got a hope kit on there. Plenty of old toys, garden stuff. Looking good. Pretty uh, varied selection this week. Um, keep them coming, we love them. This week's Rewind is a little bit different. A few people commenting on the fact that I had a mudguard on the front of my bike on social media. So I thought I'd tell you a little bit of a cool story about actually how this came about. So the name of this is the XL Fender and it's by Crud Products. The man behind that, his name is Pete Tompkins. Now the cool thing about Pete is he's the sort of guy that wants to actually get stuff done. And way back then, you've got to bear in mind that there weren't really any mudguards for mountain bikes. You get full length touring style guards or you basically strapped on half a bottle Basically, you'd cut and put it on your down tube to catch that spray that used to come off the front wheel. Got to bear in mind that back then we didn't have suspension forks with this gap that the mud came through. Mud just used to flick straight up at the bottom of the down tube and up into your face. So what Pete did was basically take out a big loan, get the tooling done, and build the first official mud guard for a mountain bike called a crud catcher. Now, this is actually one of those early, early models, almost laughable by today's standards because of the size of the thing simply fitted on the down tube there and caught that spray. All the magazines, including Mountain Biking UK that I used to work for, used to love these things because simply put, they worked and it's much better than strapping on half a bottle. You literally cut up Heath Robinson style yourself. Now, Pete was making about 10 grand at the time from painting and decorating, and he made 14 grand in three months from making those. But being a smart guy, he reinvested and then redeveloped until they came up with the later versions which had a deformable nose on, so when you had suspension forks that later came out, it wouldn't move the mud guard. Really smart bit of design. And then all the way through to today, and he's up to this version, which is actually designed by his son, Jamie, who's an incredible racer, by the way. He was on Team MB UK back in the day. Jamie also does a lot of car design. And you can see he's actually really considered this. You might have seen this mud guard on Danny Hart's bike. Uh, by today's standards, he uses these in the World Cup. 
Now something that's a bit different to these that you see on some similar looking style mudguards is the fact it's got a split design. And the advantage of that is you can run it high or low. You'd want it low if you're running in a, maybe something with a lot of spray. And you run it high like I am at the moment if you're riding somewhere with really thick mud that really can clog up mud guards. And the cool thing about that is it doesn't clog. Um, it's a mud guard and it keeps the stuff out of your face, but pretty cool that it came from these back in the 90s. Gotta love that. And now it is time for top mods. Now this is where we can showcase all the work and all the modifications you make on your bike. So if you've got something to share with us, head to the description below, hit the uploader link, and job is a good one. And first up, we have something pretty cool from Paul. Now he says he's actually kind of got in touch before regarding this bike, yeah. and I believe it was with a, a rigid fork at the time. But he has upgraded it with this Pantone match, I think by it's happy accident as much as anything. Awesome colour, isn't it? It's so cool! Like that is actually a great looking bike. Oh, no way, yeah. So he it says, so that colour was uh, a Rolls-Royce colour only found on a 2018 uh, Scott Spark Contessa. Um, wow. So Masculine. good. That is rad. So he says uh, it, it matched the bike so well. Is that a Wonder Woman sticker on the front there? I, yes. Dad, is that Wonder Woman? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so good. Um, but actually, it's funny that because it. Sometimes it's easy to overdo it when you're colouring a bike up, yeah, but that yeah. actually isn't. No, it Even matches in so well. Yeah, it all, but like the blue, the celeste, I suppose it is. Yeah. It actually all looks really, really good. And the Tamil tyres, I mean, need I say more? They look great. I, oh, I love a set but of Look tamils. at the valves, are they colour matched as well? Yeah, they are. I mean, that's Yeah, that's, that's well dedication. played. Hey, look, even um, braided hoses as well. Fantastic. Ooh, nice little extra. Yeah, super cool. Awesome work, Paul, nice one. Uh, this one's from uh, Martin in Corsham. Hola boys, um, I've always enjoyed making my bike my own so I thought I'd spend some time choosing parts to mod. I bought this cube last year and after I got it it seemed to appear everywhere I rode so I wanted to mod some parts and make it my own bike. Um, I've toned down the orange highlights and given it more of an understated look. Uh, I've added Hunt Enduro wide wheels with some Michelin tyres, oh, awesome tyres those, um, Hope rotors and Bergtech pedals. Most notably, Finn over at Full Factory Suspension converted the X2 into a coil for me. Oh, that's cool. You've had yeah. that done as a convert. That's quite cool, turning a proper an X2 air shock into a coil. I bumped into Finn yeah. a little while ago, and we are talking about it. And, you know, I didn't even realise it could be done. Yeah. Obviously, he made it work. But yeah, you can, you know, with a fork, that it's very obvious how isolated the damping and the spring forces are. But, you know, why not on a shock? And yeah, he makes it work. It looks absolutely great. It looks mega, doesn't it? Those tyres are so chunky on there. Mm. The wheels are good, those guys at home make some nice stuff. And uh, yeah, overall the bike looks great, I think. I think those tyres, like around here in the southwest, yeah. this time of year, yeah. absolutely perfect. Similar yeah. to the Baron, you know? Yeah, good, good just, rubber on those. Yeah, just like. Decent stack, like penetrate slop, but also not clag, like really, really good. I've also, I also spotted on your uh, bottle cage, you've got like, um, it looks a little bit like with a Topeak Ninja system, I don't know which one yours is, uh, holding Allen keys and stuff in there. I love like storing stuff on bikes, or at least the ability to. It doesn't mean you should have everything on your bike. Um, maybe we should have a little look and see what sort of options there are out there. I think it'd be quite a cool video. Uh, but looking good, a nice one Martin for that. And uh, um, are we right in thinking, in fact it was Henry that pointed this out, that you're actually Morton Frankfire on Instagram? Yeah. Or are we just completely making Because I, I recognise that bike and I yeah. met Morton a few times and yeah. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. You know, I'm pretty, uh, I I wish wake up pretty early in the morning. <laughs> are you Martin or are you Morton? Which are you? We didn't know. We didn't know. I've been looking up the etymology of Morton for about half an hour, <laughs> trying to work out where that was coming from. But yeah, no, fantastic looking bike and cheers for getting in, mate. Okay, for tech of the week, I'm actually going to throw you over to a video made by Formula. So head over to the Formula uh, YouTube site, basically. I'm going to put a link to it in the description underneath. And have a look at the video that they made with Chris Porter. Now, I know you've met him. Um, I've spoken about Chris many times. He's the guy with a face, I guess, you would say, behind Geometron bikes. Um, definitely one of the people, in the UK at least, I think pioneering new ways of thinking about geometry and suspension. Um, it's a really cool video. It's a bit of an introduction to Chris, I guess you'd call it, um, from the guys at Formula, talking a bit about some of the Formula products, a bit about geometry. Um, but it's quite cool because Chris certainly doesn't go with the same grain of everyone else. He definitely has his own little, his own take. I think you did a podcast with him. We did do a podcast. Really? We kind of... Um... Yeah, I mean, 
he does it does make a lot of sense. He he talks about things very passionately, and I think hats off to Formula for talking not only you know promoting their products as the elephant in the room, but actually questioning things. But they're talking a lot Why more do we do this? about yeah. stuff. And, yeah. you know, and so I think it's just um, it's a really good way to get a feel of both Formula and where they want to be as a company yeah. and Mojo and also well, Mojo Rising, and it's just. Yeah. There's some really interesting points raised in the video yeah. as well. Um, and just while we're here, um, when you watch that video, go through into outtakes and you'll see some really cool stuff that Chris did way back. Um, he did a triple air chamber, basically upgrade kit for Fabian Burrell to put on his Fox 40 that was in plain view of everyone seeing, but no one ever actually noticed it was on his bike. Yeah. Um, and that was way back from like 2011 or something. Yeah, totally. And the triple air chamber is really interesting because you're seeing Manitou in their Mesa. It's essentially a ramp control type ramp thing. control, yeah. 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 What it is is so you have the negative and the um, positive chamber charged to say, let's just call it um, 50 PSI. Yep. And then you have your high pressure chamber, which you ch usually charge to about double. So as it goes through, once that normal the main positive air gets to 100 psi then it will start also compressing yeah. the high pressure chamber so you can suddenly start really tuning the ramp of your forks certainly really cool and i wonder if we'll um, see people like fox and rock shocks you can see little add-ons the dsd i can't remember what it's called but a company called dsd out of america makes oh, little ramp right. control yeah, add-ons yeah. and um i wonder you know if fox, fox and fox shocks will fox not rox rox and fox shocks that's a new name <laughs> <laughs> but i wonder if they'll come aboard with production stuff yeah, it's, 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 it is interesting, and I think it's really cool that Chris kind of sat on that for years, not really told anyone, but there's a lot of other things that he's actually made, and I've seen prototypes of obscure stuff, mm -hmm. um, and I just kind of have a feeling some of this isn't start seeing light now, so yeah. keep an eye on, on those guys. And that is it for another week of GMBN Tech News. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, hit that notification bell. And um, it keeps us all going, keeps the lights on. So oh, thank yeah. you very much for that. A couple more videos right there for you. Yeah, we're going to click on how to keep your bike quiet down there. And uh, how a waterproof jacket is made. That is super oh, nerdy. Cool, that, yeah. It's really interesting, yeah.